Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, Late Show. I'm the host of the uh, Late Show. My name is Dave Letterman. By the way, the Late Show is America's favorite hour of inspirational television. Yeah. If you're having trouble, if you're having trouble with your personal life, if you're having trouble at home, trouble in the school, trouble, trouble even in the workplace, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I believe me, me and my TV family, Paul and the kids, I believe we can solve your spiritual problems. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I guess by now we all know about this. Very, very early this morning, uh, Bill Clinton ordered a strategic missile strike against Iraq and Saddam Hussein. You know, of course, we all know about this, right? Yes. And uh, the name of the operation, of course, is Operation Desert Strike. Originally, and I think I like the original title for it better, originally they were going to call it Operation Adios Bob Dole. I thought that made it so much better. Though. Adios Bob Dole. But you know... It, it's a defensive maneuver. Clinton is saying it's a defensive maneuver, and the missiles, uh, when they struck, they wiped out uh, six military installations and uh, three Starbucks. So, you know, <laughs> defensive maneuver altogether. But I think uh, Clinton is getting tougher because uh, last night he called in the uh, missile strike, and today, today, he challenged uh, Saddam Hussein to a pie-eating contest. So he's really getting much tougher, this guy. Much tougher. Boys. Something, something has to be done about Saddam Hussein. He is a maniacal dictator. He is a demagogue. He is a, a ruthless paranoid. And if he has not stopped, I'm telling you, this guy could become another Ross Perot. He must, must be stopped. Must do something. Stop him. Clinton, Clinton is expanding the no-fly zone in Iraq. Yeah, boy. You know, I wish somebody would expand the no-fly zone in Rupert G's Hello Deli. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a deli around the corner. <laughs> There's where you ought to expand your no-fly zone. <laughs> oh, God, I cracked a rib. The, uh, the mission is uh, various top secret, top secret mission, uh, not a, just a handful of people know about it. President Clinton, of course, knew about the uh, airstrike in Iraq. Uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff knew about it. Uh, Dick Morris's hooker, and that was it. Nobody else. Just that small group of people, very tiny. Those people there knew about it. That was all. You know, it's, um, I, I am fascinated by this relationship between a, a top uh, political consultant, Dick Morris, and a call girl, Sherry Rollins. On the one hand, on the one hand, you have a, a prostitute, a prostitute who will do anything for money, you see? And on the other hand, you have Sherry Rollins. It's an amazing thing. But I think it's interesting that President Clinton is uh, treating this whole Dick Morris thing, you know, like it never happened you know, like his marriage. So I thought, wow, that's... Kind of a... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're at war, all right? <laughs> Let me caution you. <laughs> hey, man, do we have a lovely uh, program tonight. Mira Sorvino, Academy Award winner. Lovely actress, Mira Sorvino. Mira Sorvino is there. Vincent... Vincent Perez, the uh, star of the motion picture, number one, number one uh, box office uh, motion picture uh, over the Labor Day weekend, uh, The Crow, City of Angels, uh, Vincent Perez is here. And back now, kids, there's our friend Paul Schaefer, he's right over there. I 
mentioned it last night. I hope you had a lovely uh, Labor Day, a lovely Labor Day weekend. And Paul, whenever there is a national holiday in this country, I like to ask you, because sure. being from Canada, is there a Canadian Labor Day? There is, and it, a funny thing is it takes uh -huh. place on exactly the same date every year as the American Labor Day, which yeah. is an interesting thing. But thought. that's not true of Halloween. The Canadian Halloween, Halloween totally is different. Completely yeah. different. Halloween, or uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, completely yeah. different. Halloween is on, Canadi is on American Thanksgiving, right. and Thanksgiving is on Halloween, which is nutty it's up there. It's crazy, and yeah. an election day in Canada. When the hell is that? New Year's Eve, which is a nutty thing Isn't that thing wacky? Up there. New Year's yeah. Eve, man. That's why it all, they got yeah. a whole silly country Talk up there. Talk about a party. You know? Ouch. You know, uh, this morning when I got to work and I uh, read about the uh, missile strike there in Iraq and because of the election, uh, Dole and uh, uh, Kemp and uh, President Clinton and uh, his running mate, uh, 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 Al Gore, I said to myself, Hey! Read in your pookie face, Bob Paul! Dole is getting your night more rookie, eh? Your night more rookie! Hey! Skaggy boy, buffy boy, do that again! Now stick a ball in your Jackson next day, okay? Holy cow. Wow. Is that a Canadian? It was Gaelic, I think. Odd. Speaking Gaelic. Odd. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, if you're in the audience, remain in your seats, okay? <laughs> I, I don't need to wrestle with you folks up here on stage as well. <laughs> so anyway, with, uh, with everything going on today, I said to myself, damn it, let's, let's do a news in review. Here we go, Paul. It's the Late Show News Review, in which Dave helps me and you. Just two minutes into his campaign speech yesterday, Jack Kemp ran out of things to say and started doing the Macarena. Look at that. Uh, that's Jack Kemp doing the Macarena. Uh, on Thursday, a despondent Bill Clinton discovered that despite his new campaign diet, he still can't see his shoes. Here we see a tote board showing how much money Jerry Lewis raised on his Labor Day telethon. Coincidentally, that also is the number of gallons of crude oil currently in his hair. Uh, yesterday at the annual uh, Labor Day barbecue, guests were invited to cuddle with the cows before eating them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, try to keep in mind some of these are only jokes. <laughs> Uh, recent cuts in the United States defense budget are illustrated by this photo of a top-level Pentagon official launching yesterday's attack on Iraq. <laughs> Look at that guy. Oh, no, it's this guy. We did! I can't believe it! It's not a ramen, pilotic, nobody gives a monkey's toss of you, and I'm wearing you for my riches! Eh? Hey? So what? You want to give me some madosh? Give me some money, give me some baby, eh? I, I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't catch much of that. I'm... <laughs> I see! Give some dosh, give some baby, my door. Okay, I'll consider it. Give me a call the first of next week. Thank you very much. You cheeky bum ball, have you? I say so oh, no. Man. <laughs> odd, ain't it? Wow. That's odd. Last week in London, Princess Diana welcomed her new divorce lawyer, none other than former <laughs> California judge Lance Ito. Okay. A Lance Ito joke. Sure. Uh, this morning, President Clinton responded to Iraqi aggression by dropping Wayne Newton on Baghdad. Oh. Huh. Uh, on Friday, this NASA scientist unveiled a device she claims can detect signs of life in the Dole campaign. On Monday in Wisconsin, a Clinton-Gore rally was disrupted by yet another child claiming to be the president's illegitimate son. There you go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had a pause for a commercial. We'll be right back here on The Late Show. Program. Hey, you, Hey, yeah. 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 Ye
look at that. Yeah. As you see, my Rudy bottle. Because there's no Rudy in it, is there? Eh? Eh? The Tory and Dealey Deep. Hey, Paul, what are you doing? You all right? How are you? Nice to see you. I'm fine. Yeah, Thank nice you. to see you, honey. We've got to get together. Oh, Let's, yeah, after I show you. Let's Tory and Bandit. Wait a minute. I said, no, you're way on. <laughs> oh. Okay, hold okay. that. Wow. wow. See? You know him. He seems to have a problem with you. I know. Yeah, see, I'm fine with him. He's very fond of you. You yeah. guys get along fine. Yeah, I'm the idiot in this one. Problem with him. Uh, Mira Sorvino is on the uh, program, and uh, Vincent Price will be out here a little bit later. Sorry. Vincent Perez, not, not Vincent Price. Vincent Perez. That'll be something. That's quite a booking. You get Vincent Price on this show. Oh, man. A lot of people tune in to I see know. that. Even we. S see what the old boy's up to. Yeah, I'd love to yeah. find out. Yeah. Well, it ain't Vincent Price. It's Vincent uh, Perez, star Vincent. of The Crow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, uh, rock and roll uh, sensation. Rock and roll sensation. What? I'm Dick Clark all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, Beck is on the uh, program tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here in my right hand, I have a copy of tonight's top ten list. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, category of tonight's top ten list from the home office in Wahoo, Nebraska, timely as though torn from today's headlines. Yeah. You know, uh, here in the United States, the end of the summer, Labor Day, just yesterday, uh, the kiddies, the, the youngsters, have to return to school. And in addition to being the end of summer, what is it, Paul? Back to school it's back time. back to school, exactly. Back yeah. to school back time. Back to school time. We also would have accepted back to school season. Ding. <laughs> Back to school time. Back to school right. time. So, so hence tonight's category, top ten signs, your new science teacher is nuts. Because ah. when you go back to school, you meet the new teachers. Yes. Top ten signs, your new science teacher is nuts. Here we go. Number ten. He insists that the earth revolves around actor Charles Durning. Number nine. Whenever the sun comes out from behind a cloud, he yells, supernova. Number eight. He's writing a new chemistry textbook with Robert Downey Jr. Number seven, claims he can turn gravity on and off by twisting his ears. Number six, he spends every class screaming in an incomprehensible Scottish accent. The science teacher, the science teacher, that's what that is. Uh, number five, demonstrates static electricity by quickly uh, unzipping and zipping his pants. Number four, his office is wallpapered with nude photos of Madame Curie. Yeah, I know, we're all taking it kind of hard. Number three, he prefers to mix chemicals by swishing them around in his mouth. Number two, for sex education, takes class on field trip to Dick Morris's house. And the number one sign, your new science teacher is nuts says the C in E equal MC squared stands for carrot. Our first guest won an Academy Award for her performance in Mighty Aphrodite, and she is currently nominated for an Emmy Award as well. Her new film, Sweet Nothing, opens this Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the very lovely Mira Sorvino. <laughs> Nice to see you. You look terrific. My God, you look great. Are you going out after the program? You're all dressed up. <laughs> well, I was offered two tickets to the U.S. Open, but I think I'm just going to go home and read. E yeah, but <laughs> but now, if you were going to the U.S. Open, you wouldn't go like this, would you? No, I wouldn't. But that would be something, wouldn't it? That to hell with the tennis. <laughs> My God. Uh, how have you been? How's your summer? Uh, it's been good. It's yeah. been good. Yeah, I just um, finished up a movie with Lisa Kudrow. Uh -huh. Oh, well, Lisa Kudrow is one of the one of the friends. One I just of the take friends. A guess. Yeah, one, one of, of the friends. friends. Yeah. No, you know who Lisa, Lisa is. Lisa Kudrow, uh, mad about you. <laughs> Lisa Kudrow. Lisa Phoebe Kudrow. Yes. From Friends. Friends. Yeah. Oh, so I was right the first time. Oh, uh, yes, you were. Oh. Ah. <laughs> now, 
No, actually, uh, I think uh, it was Entertainment Tonight that, that did a segment on our movie, and they came on set and they shot it, and, but they picked a whole Friends theme for, right. the, for the spot, and they said, well, Lisa Kudrow has a new screen friend, but friends were few and har far between being in high school and blah, 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 and it was all about the friend, and I was the new screen friend, so I felt very honored. Well, you know, uh, have you ever been on the Friends show? No. Uh, that'd be something, though. You'd, I mean, you would just, uh, there would be fist fights if you were on that show. <laughs> Uh, so you did the movie, and then, uh, <laughs> how did you celebrate uh, Labor Day? I didn't celebrate Labor Day. I have to say, actually, I spent all Saturday wardrobe shopping for a movie I'm doing this fall called yeah. Mimic, and then Sunday I just called old friends, and then Monday I flew up to Ithaca, New York, to go to Cornell University to visit an insect behaviorist. Really? <laughs> yes. So, no, it's not a traditional <laughs> Labor Day celebration. <laughs> well... Oh, and why are you visiting, is it an entomologist? Is yes, that it? Why yes. are you visiting one of those? Uh, because I'm playing one in Mimic. So. Oh, I see, I see. Well, what did you learn? He was only available Labor Day? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> guys, actually true. These guys are very busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was working all weekend, and, and uh, he wasn't available Saturday or Sunday, but then um, he was going out of town next week, and I'm going out of town, so... All right. And what yesterday. did you learn from the guy? Um... Actually, I learned basically that, that there is sort of love of nature in every part of science, and that it's something that... It's so fascinating, actually, if you really look at these different animals and what they do and how well adapted they are for their environments. Right. And essentially, this is all very boring, but it, it actually, to me, it was fascinating. I mean, it was a whole new world, um, but that's what I'm getting into for the character. Did you ever consider why there are so many different kinds of animals? <laughs> Um, do you have an answer for that? No, I have no answer, I, but I, I think it's endlessly fascinating. Well, I have an animal right here, actually. I have a very small, like, med fly or something that's in my face. Yeah, there it goes. There, okay, bye. He came in with a Scottish guy. Um, but he, uh, essentially, like, uh, if you have flies, you know, flies, uh -huh. you know, why, why do you have mosquitoes? You don't really, you know, pick one or the other. We don't need them both, do we? Well, I don't know. I've been reading this book called The Selfish Gene, which is all about how different kinds of genetic sequences uh, create survival machines right. to continue their existence. And and it's amazing, isn't it? We have yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands of living things all over the planet. Right. And, and the nature of things is to uh, procreate and, and continue living. Don't make any difference, you know? I mean, it's all about sex. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I, you, I, I'm told you look different, but to me, you don't look different. But for the movie, you look different. You've been told, tell Mary she looks different, but I don't. Well, you know, no, I was expecting to see you looking different, uh -huh. but in the, in the movie, you're completely different. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm accustomed Sweet to Nothing, seeing you blonde. Yes, no, in Sweet Nothing, I start off with my natural dark brown hair, actually. Uh, my hair is, by nature, if you look at my eyebrows, pretty dark. Um, well, let's take a look at those eyebrows. <laughs> there they are. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> you have very light eyebrows. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> uh, that, was a, that shot we can get. That's perfect. This shot we have no trouble with. That shot can't get it. Get in here on my ugly face. You bet. We got that in a minute. Can we get the shot of her face? Not in a million years. <laughs> So, anyway, your, your anyway, hair is... Okay, all right. Well, there's the whole hair history with me. Uh -huh. I mean, actually, I've spent a long time sort of run away, running away from my natural hair color. R why okay. is that? Um, I don't actually know, but mm -hmm. anyway, I started off life as a light brunette and got darker as I got older. Right. And the day after I graduated from college, the day after I knew that I wouldn't run into any of my old professors or fellow students, I went and bleached my hair from a dark brown to a very light blonde, and it took seven hours, and the bleach was sitting on there, and it went through this sort of red-gold Rapunzel stage, and finally it came out to this very trashy light blonde. And, uh, that, and I sported that look for about six months until it all started falling off, mm -hmm. because at that point I was a waitress in New York, and, and I couldn't really afford a good hair person, so the guy who did it would put on this white stuff, which in five minutes would lift my roots to sort of a white from a very dark brown, and soon it looked like shears had sort of taken big chunks of my hair and just cut them off all over my head. I did tough <laughs> sticking out. Um, so at that point, it went back to brown. <laughs> All right, now let's see if this helps. I understand we have a visual aid here. Oh, no, no, no. Let's see if you, oh, oh. See how this works. Oh, this is where, where does this all begin here? 
Oh, God, wait. <laughs> Show me what you're doing. I don't know. Where does that go? Oh, here's no. college. There, there you are in college. Is that where we go? Um, yeah, I think this is how this works. Wait, this makes me look like Betty Davis. There where you she go. There, played there you like are Queen college. Elizabeth. There you are in college. Now, that's not bad. Okay, now here. Here you are the <laughs> day after graduation. That's good. Okay. Cheap New York hairstylist. Okay. All right. All right. That's All right. better than it looked, are. actually. Sweet okay, sweet nothing. nothing. I was back to a very dark brown. I played this Italian-American yeah. <laughs> girl living in the Bronx. And what happens is when our family gets money, when my husband starts dealing crack, uh, <laughs> this is sweet nothing. Yeah. Movie. Okay. Yeah. It's a sad story. It is yeah, a sad story. I don't like story. movies like that. It's sad, isn't it? I don't, you know, I have enough trouble in my own life. When I go see something terribly sad like that, it just breaks my heart. But it's, That's it's good. Really, it's, it's good if it breaks your heart. If it's good, if it actually breaks you your heart, it's good. That. You can learn from that. Well, I mean, you feel something. Yeah, that crack's no good. Take that, it from me. Don't. That crack's get, no good. No, no, no. But at that point, I put sort of tiger stripes in it, which you can't see in the sweet nothing picture. Uh -huh. That's not really right. accurate. Okay, okay Buccaneers. This? We did go to red, but that doesn't look like <laughs> hair. That looks no, like a fish. It, <laughs> it looks like like red fish yeah, swimming through my head. Cute. And then here we are in Mighty Aphrodite. That was nice. And then, yeah, yeah back to uh, right here, present day. There you go. That's, That's not lovely. Good. You can take that, Mary. You enjoy that. We'll uh, we to pause here for a commercial. We'll be right back with Mira Sorvino. Vincent uh, Perez uh, from uh, The Crow and uh, Beck. So you uh, won an Academy Award for uh, Mighty Aphrodite. You played you played a hooker, you played a call girl, you played a prostitute, that kind of deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, and you also nominated for an Emmy Award. Yes. Yeah, excited. You can't, you can't be nearly as excited about the Emmy Award as you are having won the Academy Award. Everything else is a little, you know. No, I'm very pleased about the Emmy nomination. Pleased but not excited. No, I'm excited. All right, excited. I'm but, excited. You're too much. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I'm I'm overjoyed. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it's about a different project, which I'm I'm happy that it's not all about Mighty Aphrodite. That it was like. Well, that's true. It, it's nice to continue yeah. your career moving on. That is good. Yeah, to be uh, notified or noticed for your uh, other works. But what will you do? Anything big? Um, I'm actually going to bring out two girlfriends of mine to the show rather mm -hmm. than making it a family I'd affair. like to do that once. Jeez. <laughs> bring out two girlfriends, you don't know? <laughs> Very nice. There we go. A lot of people, lot of people can pull that off. I can't. I have no oh. luck. I don't know. I don't I know. Even, where do you begin with something like that? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to you, Meryl. Okay. <laughs> so you and the girls are going to like a girls' night out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we're going to do. And, that's and, good. Uh, I don't know. We're going to sort of rate the guys as they walk in, mm -hmm. and you know, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. We're just going to have fun. Yeah. Well, are you, will you be wearing that outfit? No, no. I, no you win it. You won. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, it'll be something longer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, uh, the movie a bit, a little bit more. I was making light of it because it's such a terrible, terribly sad, ugly circumstance. Tell okay, about well, it. it's a human story. I mean, I don't think you should think of it as such a... It's a story about addiction and a family, but it's ultimately got a ton of heart, and I think a lot of movies about drugs often are just about the drug or about the glamour of it, and mm -hmm. this actually doesn't really glamorize the drug. It's sort of... I think ultimately you care very much about... Monica and Angel are two characters, mm -hmm. and when I look back at the film, I sort of remember them as people that actually right. have their own little lives. Right. Um, so that you know. So it's just folks struggling with the uh, vagaries it's, of it's, existence it's, it's, in it's the nineties. Like it's it's a family. It's like a lower middle class family that lives in the Bronx. It's not a, you know, sweet nothing. is not about club kids who are going out and trying mm -hmm. every latest new experience. I mean, we're sort of people that fall into a hole and we're trying to get out of it, but. Yeah. Yeah, but it, your experience working in the movie and your experience being alive in the 90s, wouldn't you say, <laughs> wouldn't you agree with me, though, that by and large, pretty much the glamour of drug use has, has kind of worn off completely at this point? Um, I think it has. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I mean, when you find guys dead in hotel rooms, that's where the glamour ends, don't you think? That's where the glamour absolutely ends. I mean, what bothers me is when you have, like, fashion Ooh. magazines saying, models on heroin in this issue. Yeah. I mean, you can't say that that's not glamorizing drug use. Yeah. Um, Could you give me that issue? <laughs> <laughs> Naked models on here. Oh, look out. Uh, um, so uh, then uh, uh, things are going well for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's great. No, no, that's but this great. movie was a movie that we did with like Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It was made for like $200,000. It's a small project. It was a small project. Yeah. Um, but I'm really proud of it because I think it has a real. I don't know. It just, it just is very moving and it doesn't pretend to be a gimmick and it's not about. 
Does it have a happy ending? It has a hopeful ending. Yes, it's That's uplifting. Good. That's good. It's good. not. It's not a complete nihilistic downer. It's about like humanity. Yeah. And that's all I can say. It sounds like a drag, but it's not. <laughs> um, and Michael Imperioli is absolutely brilliant in it. And he's an actor that people are going to be hearing a lot more about. Oh, good, him. good. Well, it's nice to see you again. Well, nice to see you. Thank too. you very much for spending a bit of your busy schedule with us. And uh, good luck next weekend at the Emmys. Say hello to your father for us. Uh, he's not going to be there, but well, I'll say, I'll say hi him anyway. Whenever you see him, yeah. Sure. yeah. There's no date on there. There's no expiration date on that hello. Hi, Dad. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much, Mira. Nice Thank to see you. you. Mira Sorvino. Let me right back. There. Vincent Perez uh, will be here with us in a moment. Uh, also on the program tonight, uh, back tomorrow on the uh, show, Whoopi Goldberg will be here. Al Franken, uh, the author of Rush Limbaugh is a Big Fat uh, Idiot. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Carly Horn. Yeah. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Say, you're a chunky, then you are. Think I'm the light. I'm missing you in the ball, great. Right? So I see you say, son. Are you laughing now? You want to be laughing now, say, won't you? Any day of the week, fucking thank you, son. Hey! <laughs> okay. Cute, isn't he? Uh, Al Franken and uh, Ron Severson, the human echo. That's the uh, program tomorrow. We got to uh, go away again. We'll be right back with Vincent Perez, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jerry Bob McNamara and comedian Blake Clark only on the Late Late Show only on CBS. Yes, sir. Ah. You know this guy, right? You know this man? You met this man? Victor Pettis? <laughs> I've met Vincent before. Who would I call him? Victor? I call him Victor. <laughs> it's, it's, what is his name? Vincent. Vincent, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Our, our next guest is a uh, talented actor whose uh, work you may have seen in such films as Queen Margot and Indochine. He now stars in The Crow, City of Angels, which is currently the number one motion picture in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Vincent Perez. Vincent. <laughs> suits, but it looks damn good on you. You like it? Welcome to the uh, program. I'm sorry I called you Victor. Forgive me. Oh, uh, Victor Perez. And, and what, did, what else did you need? Um, Perez, I think. Perez? Yeah. I, I, but I like to, you know... Uh, in like French, to... you want to do it in French, it's Perez. Yeah, well, Perez. that's why I was trying to Frenchy it up. For Vincent you. Perez. Perez. Yes. Perez. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, uh, the, the movie, number one, like $10 million at the box office over the weekend. That must make you feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, makes me feel great. Yeah. My first American movie is yeah. quite a good fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where are you from, exactly? Oh, it's quite easy, in fact. I was born in Switzerland. Uh, my mom is German. My father is Spanish. And uh, I lived this last 13 years in France, so it's quite easy if you oh, want to make so sure. you're, you're yeah. like a real international kind of a deal then, aren't you? Quite, yeah, yeah. European, what, yeah. What, what, is it, what is it like growing up in Switzerland? Is that, is that good for a kid? Not so, it's got to be not bad well, for a Well, I was in the flat area of Switzerland, so it was quite boring, in fact. Um, uh, you know, the mountains are great and beautiful, but the, the valley is like the flat. <laughs> uh, and yeah. that, that has an effect on a kid growing up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's depressing yeah. when things are quite, flat. Quite depressing. So I, I, I left as soon as possible. Uh, <laughs> I was 17, so I was very slow, in fact. But I left when I was 17 to, uh, to France, to Paris. Uh, so yeah. and where do you live now? Um, I live between uh, Los Angeles, uh, New York, and Paris. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm working in London. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. you're like Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I live up near uh, 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 Scarsdale. Right. <laughs> Just a little north. You know, Scarsdale, Larchmont, that area? Well, White Plains, Scarsdale, Larchmont, in that area. Oh, you know, right, right. You're talking about L.A., New York, and Paris. Oh, right, I live right. White Plains, Scarsdale, Larchmont. It's the same kind of a deal. Uh,
Yeah, do you want me to quote my mom? Tell me what your mom said. She, I'm very quite, uh, it's quite, uh, well, she's, she's saying that, is that my, I have, a half side of me is German, the other side is Spanish, yeah. you know, wow. and she used to say that the lower part is more Spanish than German. Uh -huh. Yeah. He looks at me. I don't know, I don't know, I was looking at it. Because, you know, I don't know. Because I know me. I, so every two or three days we get an urge to invade Madrid. I don't know. It's on I don't know what I'm I don't know. I'm trying to make an old joke out of nothing. I don't know. Uh, so now you're, you're the crow. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations. This is, uh, did you know much about this movie before you get the part? Um, I had Do you know about the source material for it? It's a... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, when, I, when I had the meeting with the producers just before that, I saw the movie and I, and I read the comic book. Right. So, uh, and uh, when, I, when I met the producer and, and Tim Pope, the director, uh, um, uh, yes, I, I, I knew the, the, the subject. Was, yeah. It was quite... In fact, it was a little bit tricky because I, it's not really a sequel. No. It's it's based on the same comic book, That's and right. the it link, the major link, is, is with the comic book. Is, is the crow? Yeah. Now, now no, with the comic book, with not the comic with book, the first crow. Right. But you, you, you are the crow. Well, is also with the first crow. Yeah, sure. Right, it's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but as the crow, what do, what do you do? Do you you, uh, you have uh, superpowers? No, it's not it's not a Batman kind of movie. Yeah. No. Well, that'd be good though, wouldn't it? That'd be that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would be good, yeah. <laughs> but I'm very happy with the crow, you know. <laughs> you know, I think. But, uh, right. <laughs> Should I leave now? Or no! Not? Okay, what a, right. Come on! What the, what's a horrible attitude? What's the matter with you? Are you cold? We're having a lot of fun here. She's freezing. No, she's fine. She's oh, there. Oh, Are right. you freezing? Are you all right? I'm fine. So, right, it, it's the story of uh, um, a, a spirit, a, no, spirit, a spirit trapped in a limbo. It's very spiritual, the, uh, the crow, isn't it? It's very, very in touch with mythology, mm -hmm. and, and in fact, it's, it's kind of a fairy tale, quite a violent one, but it's also quite a romantic movie. Right. Uh, I'm, I have to say, I love this movie. I'm very proud of well, it. Well, good, as well you should be. And uh, apparently, millions and millions of uh, American moviegoers agree because it's a, a huge hit for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What will you do now after The Crow? Will you go uh, you, uh, on to, are you working on other films? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I started a movie uh, two days ago. Yeah, what is that? In England. Uh, and I'm here. Uh, uh, so uh, it's a, a movie based on a, on a Joseph Conrad no short novel, mm -hmm. Amy Foster, uh, with Kathy Bates, mm -hmm. uh, Sir Ian McCallan, uh, Rachel Wise. And directed by uh, Biban Kidron. So it's quite an exciting project. I'm well, very good happy for you. To be in that. Good for yeah. you. And yeah. uh, thank you very much. So you had to come right over to be on this show and then you go back and go to work again? Absolutely. Well, that's very nice of you. I certainly Absolutely. appreciate that. It means a great deal to me to have you here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure meeting thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vincent Haddad, ladies and gentlemen. Well, commercial break, I, I lost a bet. <laughs> Our uh, next guest is a uh, most interesting uh, new talent. His current CD is called O Delay. I have a copy of it right here, as a matter of fact. And he is uh, making his uh, network television debut with us. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Beck. <laughs> I'm 
Have you here? Uh, did I just call you Beck. Is that your first yeah, name? Beck last Hansen. Name? Beck Hansen. Hansen is so my last your first name. Yeah. Oh, nice to have you. It's a great song, great album. Thank you very much. What, what does the name of this mean? Odele. It's a phonetic spelling of uh, Odele. Uh huh. It was a slang word. Mm -hmm. Phonetic Spanish spelling, spelling of a slang word. Yes. Exactly. Meaning? Uh, Odele. Right on. Something like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I don't know what it means. It's How old are you? I, it's a word I grew up hearing. You heard it all the time. Where, yeah. you grew, where did you grow up? Uh, Los Angeles East Side. Oh, right. yeah. I guess, sure. Huh? Uh, how old are you? 26. 26. And it, this is like your first big, big deal in music then, huh? Um, one and a half, maybe. <laughs> one and a half deal. I had a song a couple years ago yeah. called Loser. Yeah. And then this is the other part. Coming. This is the other part. Well, that's good. And uh, are you traveling? Are you touring? You in the band? You out of the road? Touring all the time, uh -huh. every time, every day. <laughs> is, is that Never fun? Stops. It's got to be fun, it's right? Great. Well, yeah, it's good. It's yeah. tiring, but it's good. It's life, but it's a lot of fun. Life on the road. This is what it's all yeah, about. This is what you dream for. Bus. Yeah. You sort of <laughs> crawl in this little coffin thing, and you just go to sleep. <laughs> the bus goes like this. Yeah. You're trying to sleep. It's and and. Like <laughs> Are you all across the country? Are you tra traveling? Uh, yeah, the world, the whole world. We've been to Hong Kong. We've been to, you know, Finland, everywhere. Standouts? <laughs> yeah, those are, those are like the sort of, I'm thinking of the, the two end points, yeah. you know. And spectrum. everything in between, Finland and, and Hong everything Kong. in between, yeah. yeah. And, and when you're traveling in the United States, do you notice uh, regional differences uh, still remaining in cities, or have things become so homogenized? As there to not be a parent. There is similarities, but um, probably more between countries. In America, I'd say, yeah, the South still got the Southern thing. The North still got the Northern thing. But, you know. And out west, you got cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you know, out west. Yeah. Well, that's where I'm from, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but LA is kind of the South. And all sure, that. of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Beck, Odelay, big, big. It's a monster, isn't it? 
It's a, it's a gentle monster. Yeah, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's the big program tonight. Before we leave, my thanks to Ewan Bremner. Uh, he can also be seen as Spud in the motion picture Train Spotting, currently in oh, theaters. Yeah. That's good. That's my thanks also to uh, oh, Beck, wow. Vincent Perez, uh, Mira Sorvino. Good luck next weekend. Have a lovely evening. Good night, everybody. Thank you.